In this video, we are going to go over how to calculate standard deviation, but this time we're going to do some examples of grouped data. So in a frequency table, and then in example two for a table where the class interval is not equal uh, to one. So let's look at this first example. The number of hours worked by OR nurses at Stottsville Hospital is in the table below. Uh, it's asking us to calculate the mean and the standard deviation. Now this is actually going to be, this is our weighted mean because we have a frequency table um, and our frequency is really going to be our weight. So let's find that first. In order to find our weighted mean, we know that this is the sum of our weight times our x values divided by the sum of our weights. Or in this case, we could also write it like this, our frequency times x over the sum uh, of our frequencies. So let's write this out to find our weighted mean. So we've got 1 times 12 plus 5 times 32 plus 7 times 35 plus 38 times 8. Oops, I wrote that one backwards. Let's switch that around. Plus 8 times 38 plus 5 times 42 and then we're going to divide by the sum of our frequencies or the sum of our weights so the sum of that second column 1 plus 5 plus 7 plus 8 plus 5 this is going to give us 931 over 26 and this is going to give us our weighted mean as 35.8 rounding to 1 decimal place. Double check that you do get the same value on your calculator. By now calculating the weighted mean, now we can go ahead and calculate our deviation, so x minus x bar, and then we can calculate our deviation squared. And then finally, because we have a frequency table, we're going to multiply our frequency. So this is our column 2 multiplied by column 4. So let's go ahead and fill out the table. So we've got x minus x bar. So 12 minus 35.8. And we can continue on down the table. Just like in the standard deviation video, what you might want to do is pause the video, see if you can fill in the table by yourself, and then double check to make sure that you are getting uh, the same values. So in this fourth column here, remember that we are taking our values from the third column and squaring them. The reason that we are squaring them is to cancel out uh, the, the effect of negative values. And the whole goal of this is to find the standard deviation of the data or how far apart the data is spread from the mean. In this example, you're doing a distribution of hours worked by OR nurses, so you would hope that the standard deviation is fairly low, that the nurses are working on average the same amount. If they're not, and the standard deviation is high, that is going to lead you to do some investigation into how hours get allotted um, or how things get chosen. Finally, because we have a frequency table, we have another column. We need to multiply our frequency by our deviation squared. So for the first one, we've got 1 times 566.44, which is the same value. For the next one, I have 5 times 14.44, 7 times 0 0.64, 8 times 4.84, uh, 5 times 38.44. Adding it up, this is the total that we're interested in to calculate the standard deviation. It gives us 874.04. This column is important. You could expand this all out, and you would have a much longer table. So for example, you would have 
one data point that was 12, you'd have five data points that were 32, seven that were 35, and so on. So by condensing them into this frequency table, it allows us to do one calculation for each data point that is the same, which makes our calculation much more efficient. So what we have now is uh, the value that we need to be able to calculate the standard deviation. So we can use uh, our formula here, same as before. The only difference is that we have to multiply by that frequency, which we did in our table. So we can write this out here as 874.04 divided by 26. Now, where do we get our 26 from? This is our total number of data points or the sum of our frequency, which is going to be the total of our second column here. So 1 plus 5 is 6. 6 and 7 is 13. 13 and 8 would be 21. And then 21 and 5 would be 26. That is where those two numbers come from. Dividing and square rooting gives us that our standard deviation is approximately 5.8. So that means that most of the data is collected uh, within 5.8 standard deviations of the mean. Okay. Let's do one more example with a class interval that's not equal to 1. Um, because we don't have actual data values, our method from example 1 doesn't work. We need to estimate where all of the data points lie. So what we're going to assume is that in between these two endpoints that the data is distributed like this, with the majority of the data in the middle. And so what we're going to use is we're just going to assume that every data point in that interval is equal to the midpoint. Depending on your data, this could give you a great uh, reference for the standard deviation or not. So class interval that's not equal to 1, you are going to use the midpoint to calculate your weighted average, to calculate your deviations, to calculate your deviation squared, um, and allow you to finish the question. So just like in example one, our first step is to find the weighted mean using the midpoints. So the approach is exactly the same as before. We are going to multiply our weights, which is our frequency column here, by the midpoint for each of the intervals. So for our first one, we've got 32 times 550 plus 11 times 1550 plus 5 times 2550 plus 2 times 3550. And then we're going to divide by the sum of our frequencies, which is really our total number of data points. So 32 plus 11 plus 5 plus 2. This is going to give us 545 over 50 which gives us a weighted average of 10.9, rounding to one decimal place. Double check on your calculator, make sure that you are getting the same value for the weighted mean. Once we have that weighted mean, we can now calculate our deviations, our deviations squared, and then our frequency times our deviations squared. So let's go through that. Just like in example one, what you might want to do is pause the video complete the table on your own and make sure that you're getting the same values. So minus 5.4, 4.6, 14.6, .6, 14 and 24.6. Squaring them gives us 29 29.6, 21.16, 213.16, 605.16, and then we're going to move on to our last column, which is just our frequency. So column two. And we're going to multiply by, let's see, column one, two, three, four, five in this one. Our deviations squared, which is going to give us 933.12, 232.76, 1065.8. 1,210.32, 
Now we need two totals in order to be able to calculate our standard deviation. The first total that we need is same as above. We need the total of our frequency column because that tells us our number of data points that we are looking at. So we can add those up. This is 50. The second one that we need is the total of our final column here because that is our the sum of the squares of our deviations. And if we add those all up, we would get 3,442. Okay, once we have those two values, we can plug them in to our standard deviation formula. Again, you don't need to memorize this. I would uh, give the formula to you on a quiz assignment or test. Putting in our values here, we've got 3,442 divided by the sum of our frequency column, which is just the number of our data points. Evaluating that gives us a standard deviation of 8.30. We are also asked to calculate one more thing in this. We, are, we found the standard deviation. We're also looking for the median. Uh, so let's do that before we conclude. So our median, also represented by capital M, is going to be equal to our data point that is in the middle. So in order to find that, we can use this formula here. So n plus 1 divided by 2, which is going to give us uh, our middle data point. So, so our, let's call it a data number that is the middle. And so here we've got 50 data points plus 1 divided by 2. So let's call this the median term. So this is going to give us 25.5. I think I've got too many decimal points in there. There we go. 25.5. So what that means is that our 25th point fifth piece of data is going to be our median. So if I go back up to my chart and I'm going to add these I don't even have to. So I'm going to look at my frequencies. I see that in my first row, I've got 32 pieces of data in that row. So that means my 25th point fifth piece is going to be in that first column. So I can make the conclusion that the median is 5.50. This is a summary of how to calculate standard deviation. Should be familiar. Now we're just applying it to uh, grouped data. So with a class interval equal to 1 and then a class interval not equal to 1.